Secrets are always being found. Some of these are shocking and can be unexplainable. These mysteries are discovered all over the world, but today we're going to focus on Europe, which has many things that are being found each day. Let's see what unique places have in store for us from an ancient computer to an alien cave. Let's explore these mysteries to find out what they might be on the 15 shocking things recently discovered in Europe. Mystery Sphere This sphere unearthed in Bosnia is one huge rock that might be something more special than just a stone. It was found in a forest and could be a part of an ancient civilization. Well, let's find out more about this odd ball of stone. An archaeologist named Sam, who called the Bosnian stone ball the most massive in Europe, has some information that will help us get to the bottom of this mystery sphere. He's even been researching prehistoric stone balls for 15 years. When this one was found, it became the most massive stone sphere in Europe. Less than half of the ball is uncovered. The radius is said to be between 1.2 to 1.5 meters. The brown and red color of the ball points to a very high content of iron. It's believed they were first sculpted from a local stone before being hammered and polished with sand. Some scientists think the rock was likely a natural formation and not a human construct. The explanation for this may be an example of concretion. This is when a compact mass of rock is formed by the precipitation of natural mineral cement within the spaces between sediment grains. The result is often spherical, so most likely this is how this huge stone ball came to be. Hey, hey, did you know that if you smash the like button, subscribe and click the notification bell, you're more likely to win the lottery? So what are you waiting for? The Eyes of God Known as Cave with the Eyes of God, if you ever visit Bulgaria, you should check this place out. Prohodna Cave is one of the most popular tourist attractions in Bulgaria. It's known for its stunning sights, with rays of light beaming through symmetrical holes on the cave ceiling. It's said when you stare at the holes at the top, time stops. The holes are located in the middle chamber of the 262 meter long cave, lighting the interior, and this formation could have been caused naturally due to erosion. Sometimes water trails down these holes that look like a pair of crying eyes. The size of one entrance makes part of the cave suitable for bungee jumping and is a popular spot for that activity. It's a fairly easy hike towards either entrance of the cave, so it's not hard to access. A good amount of rock climbing can also be done here, so if you want to enjoy a great view, that could be a good idea. There are traces of prehistoric habitation in the cave, which tells us that humans lived in the cave a long time ago. So. Does that mean these holes were human-made, or is the erosion more likely? Let us know what you think down below. Mm -hmm. The Fountain Tree This tree is 100 years old, maybe even 150. A hole was created in the middle, and an underground spring has broken through to the crown, making what some call a fountain tree. The official name is Montenegro's Gushing Water Tree, this is an old mulberry tree that turns into a water fountain every time it rains heavily. Obviously, water doesn't normally gush out of living trees, but in this case, the phenomenon has a reasonable explanation. The rains here flood the underground springs, and the additional pressure created pushes water up the tree trunk through the cracks or hollows on the trunk until it poured out of a hole a few feet above the ground. There's a video where you can see that the ground is quite sloppy, showing the amount of groundwater there is in the soil. You can also see water bubbling out of other holes in the meadow. The entire area flows like a tiny stream. This has been happening for the last 20 to 25 years, or maybe even longer. This tree fountain is very special, but it isn't the only example of water gushing out of the ground after rainfall. In Estonia, there's a well that starts spouting water after heavy rain, the well is placed just over an underground river. After rainwater floods the river, water pressure builds to the point that it shoots up out of the well. This effect is very similar but is not a natural occurrence, since as you know a well is man-made. This tree is one very surreal discovery. Europe must have many more beautiful secrets that we just haven't found yet. The Disappearing Road this road can only be driven on for a few hours each day because it disappears two times every day. But how is that possible? 
Well, due to a tide, the passage is flooded twice a day as it becomes fully submerged, appearing like there was never a road there in the first place. The road is only accessible during the low tide, becoming free of water, then it gets used as quickly as possible. Let's hope you're not on this road when it gets covered by the sea, though. Located on the Atlantic coastline, the two and a half mile long road is a gorgeous landscape of mud flats and sandy beaches, and it's also considered a national monument of France, so it might be worth visiting. The roadway has been raised and paved many times according to the tides and currents. While watching the disappearing road may be captivating, it's also dangerous since the water level can reach over 13 feet. It has rescue points built throughout the passage. If you're caught in the floods, it can be very difficult to reach dry land before the entire stretch becomes chest deep in water. It's good to know there are digital panels that let people know whether the road is passable, so you won't have to worry about when it's safe or not. Even with the signs, there are incidents every year as people become trapped by the quickly rising tide and occasionally even some reported casualties. The discovery was first mentioned in 1701, but it wasn't until around 1840 that regular service was used on this road. <laughs> Spanish Crystal Cubes When you first look at these crystal cubes, they seem man-made, but surprisingly, they're completely natural. Pyrite from a mine near Navajoon, Spain is famous for its beautiful shine, almost perfect cubic formations, and sculptural appearances. The lands of Rioja have been inhabited by many different people over the ages, some of whom collected and used the pyrite cubes themselves. The inhabitants here in 300 BC used the pyrite crystals for magic, and these local inhabitants were known as the Paritas. During the Roman Empire, the crystals were collected and exported back to Rome, where they were used as tiles and mosaics. During medieval times, the pyrites were used locally in medicine, and the small cubes were even ingested. These cubes are very sharp, so it's probably a good idea not to swallow them. In 1965, Pedro Anseramo Garrett obtained the exploration concession for the Victoria Mine, and the mining concession has been operated for mineral specimens continuously since 1970. The mining operations have been conducted on three levels of the mountainside. The lowest level is All Open Pit, which is the largest of the workings and to date has produced the most stunning crystal cubes. Pyrite from the Victoria Mine is often mirror bright, sharp, and perfect beyond compare. These are generally regarded as the world's best cubic crystals of pyrite. You can even book a visit to explore the mine, dig for specimens, and take what you find. You might be lucky enough to find a massive cube specimen that catches your fancy, but beware this pyrite is heavy. <laughs> the Devil's Bible The legend of the Devil's Bible goes as follows. There was a monk who broke his vows and was sentenced to be walled up alive. To avoid this scary penalty, he promised to create in one night a book to glorify the monastery forever, including all human knowledge. Near midnight, he became sure he could not complete this task alone because the monk would have to work for six hours a day and write six days a week to finish this manuscript in about five years, so obviously he needed help. He tried prayer, not addressed to God, but to the fallen angel Lucifer, asking him to help him finish the book in exchange for his soul. The devil completed the manuscript and the monk added the devil's picture out of gratitude for his aid. This is known as the largest medieval manuscript in the world. It's not its 620 pages at three feet in size that makes it special, it's the devil within. Portraits of the devil were common during the Middle Ages, but this particular portrait is unique. Here, the devil is alone on the page. The image is very large, around 19 inches tall. The devil is crouching and facing forward. He's naked apart from a loincloth. There's much speculation as to how the devil made its way into the most sacred text, but the answer remains elusive. Makes you wonder, did one person write all of this? Or was it something supernatural? Well, if it was the devil, hopefully this isn't too cursed. The Crooked Forest This very eerie forest in Poland formed around the beginning of World War II. These spooky trees have become one of the world's most obscure and captivating mysteries. In the Crooked Forest, about 400 pine trees unbelievably grow crookedly with full 90-degree curves at their bases that bend towards the north. The trees curve into a C-shape, bending from 3 up to 9 feet sideways before carving back down to grow straight up from there. They grow to be around 50 feet tall and are generally healthy even with the unnatural curves at the base. The trees in the Crooked Forest are different than most. 
They're smooth, not gnarled like other trees that are curved because they have suffered from a genetic mutation. There's no certain explanation for these pines' weird shape, and the stories about them are either practical or very bizarre. The most grounded theory is that the trees may have simply been buried beneath a terrible snowstorm in their early growth. Some people believe the gravitational pull in the area has morphed their trunks. The most reasonable explanation suggests that local foresters manipulated the trees after planting around the year 1925. Supposedly, the foresters hoped to make furniture from the bent shapes and intervened when the trees were 10 years old. They made sure to make the trees grow upwards. The foresters stunted their growth most likely stopping their efforts after the start of World War II. This would be a scary place to be during a foggy morning alone, wouldn't it? <laughs> the Petrifying Well This well in North Yorkshire, England somehow gives objects a stone-like appearance. If an object is placed into this well and left there for months or years, the object acquires a stony exterior that looks like something from an apocalypse film. For many centuries, people believed that this petrifying well was cursed by the devil. Wait a minute, another place where the devil is involved? Is the devil leaving us clues? The myth for this well is fueled by the fact that this side of it looks like a giant skull. Some people even feared that if they touched the well's water, they would be turned to stone. What's truly crazy is the speed at which objects get transformed. A few people left everyday items in the dripping water just to watch them slowly turn to stone over just a few weeks. Modern-day scientists got around to analyzing water samples from the well, and the water was found to contain a high mineral content that forms a coating around objects. With longer exposures, the coating would create a hard mineral shell, thus creating this creepy effect. The calcite levels in the water are so high that visitors are not able to drink it, so don't try to turn your insides into stone. That doesn't sound fun. <laughs> The Devil's Finger In Britain, this scary-looking fungus is commonly known as Devil's Finger. Again, what's up with all the devil references? In parts of the United States, it's referred to as the octopus fungus. A global warming accelerates this species may become more common in Europe. Hopefully not, though, because it looks gross and it apparently smells awful. So let's make climate change not happen. That would be nice. It has a starfish-like fruit body whose four to six and sometimes even eight arched red arms are coated with a smelly gleba on the upper surface. The bright red color makes this interesting species very easy to identify. The arms of devil's fingers emerge vertically and spread out, making the gleba accessible to insects. This is how the spores are distributed. So if you were wondering what these smell like, here's the best description. A strong, unpleasant odor like rotting meat. If you haven't smelled rotting meat, we guess you won't know unless you find one of these, but most likely rotten meat will be easier to run into. At least this fungus isn't harmful, so the devils must just want us to experience that nasty smell. <laughs> Sunken Park A mysterious underwater park in the Austrian mountains sounds intriguing. This seems like something from the future because of climate change. A park underwater does sound cool though. Green Lake is a lake in Austria known for its emerald green hue and its changing depth throughout the year, at times leaving a park completely submerged in it. The water for the lake is provided mainly by runoff from the surrounding karst mountains. It at its fullest is about 10 meters deeper than normal in the spring after the sun has melted the snow off nearby glacial summits, which is typically sometime in the summer. The lake is engulfed in water filling to seven times its original depth. It's quite the view. Seeing the spot covered up to 36 feet of water, including pathways, trees, bridges, and beaches. Sadly, recent regulations mean you can no longer dive below the water as it's a threat to the preservation of the lake. That said, it's still worth a visit to hike around and admire the lake's beauty from the trails. At least there's footage of the divers who went under before the rules so you can still see the breathtaking landscapes underwater. Viking Sword in a Lake A young girl was swimming with her family in a lake in southern Sweden when she stumbled upon a long metal object. She returned wielding an Iron Age sword, not something you find often. She said she felt something odd beneath her hand and knee, so she lifted the object out and saw that it had a handle. She pulled it out of the water and carried it over to her father. Her father saw it and told her she shouldn't be touching it. Apparently, she's now considered the Queen of Sweden. The sword is in total 85 centimeters long and exceptionally well preserved, including a holder made of wood and leather. This sword has been considered to be from the Iron Age, which is at least 1,000 years old, perhaps even 1,500 years old. 
A team will conduct additional searches of the area. They hope to find other items that could offer clues about the sword and the jewelry. What do you think happened so long ago which led to a sword being lost to the bottom of the lake? Let us know in the comments. Ancient Computer the mysterious Antikythera mechanism, a very rare artifact found in an ancient Greek shipwreck, has fascinated archaeologists, classes, historians, and the public for decades. In 1900, Greek sponge divers found the shipwreck, which was submerged nearly 150 feet. The original divers surfaced with reports of artifacts, horses, and even corpses. Since then, much had been found in the shipwreck, including the device that people call an ancient computer. The mechanism, which was designed to calculate dates and predict astronomical phenomena, has therefore been called the earliest analog computer. The mechanism tracked the lunar calendar, predicted eclipses, and charted the positions and phases of the moon. It also tracked the seasons and ancient festivals similar to the Olympics. The calendar is based on the time from one full moon to the next, and a special dial allowed the user to also envision the seasons which would have been useful for agriculture. The most advanced thing the mechanism did was lunar calculations. It could figure out the moon's period at a given time and model its orbit. Nothing like this instrument is preserved elsewhere. It's a bit scary to know that the ancient Greeks had come so close to our age with their scientific technology. <laughs> Alien Cave Movio Cave, which was absorbed in darkness for about five and a half million years, it was discovered in 1986 on the Romanian seaside, where the evolution of life has taken place in a completely different way from the rest of the world. Whatever was left inside the dark cavern had to evolve without sunlight or air. Yet, despite the lack of any light and the poisonous atmosphere, life has thrived with unique spiders, scorpions, and even creepy crawlers like centipedes. The first person to enter the cave was Romanian scientist Christian Lascou. Since that time, around 100 people have been able to make the dangerous descent down into the cave. The oxygen level was low in the air of this cave. It contains just 10% oxygen rather than the usual 20%. Without a breathing apparatus, you'd soon feel a headache. People can barely stay for 5 or 6 hours at a time before their kidneys pack in. For a lot of this cave, you must dive into the lake and navigate narrow underwater passageways and squeeze through tiny gaps in the rock before coming into small air spaces so this is not a place for claustrophobic people. 33 out of 48 species discovered here are unique and have characteristics that are only found here and not any other creature in the world has them. Most of the creatures in this cave have no vision and lack pigment so they were born into the darkness like Bane from Batman. Shroud of Turin The Shroud of Turin is a 14-foot linen cloth bearing an image of a crucified man that's become a popular Catholic icon and its length of a linen cloth bearing the negative image of a man. Some claim the image depicts Jesus of Nazareth and the fabric is the burial shroud in which he was wrapped after the crucifixion. More than 600 years after it first appeared in historical records, the Shroud of Turin remains an important religious symbol for Christians around the world. The first historical record of the Shroud dates from 1353 or 1357, and people even had the chance to see the history on display in the cathedral in Turin in 2015. There was no charge to view it, so some people got to see an important piece of Catholic history for free, definitely a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Security is tight for this frail piece of history. It hasn't been shown to the public since April 2020 and is guarded by security cameras as well as bulletproof glass. So this is not an easy thing to see. Maybe it gives you special powers or luck. <laughs> underwater farm. Growing things underwater sounds like a lot of effort and seems like some technology we haven't figured out yet. But this project called Nemo's Garden is ahead of its time. This project began in 2012 and it currently consists of seven pods and biospheres, each of which can hold around 22 plant pots and of course is underwater. 100 meters off the coast of Noli in Italy lies a cluster of balloon pods pegged to the seabed by ropes six meters long. Inside a range of food is being grown, including red cabbage, lettuce, beans, basil, and strawberry. There have been some doubts regarding this way of farming because the main concern would be whether a setup like this would disrupt the local farm infrastructure. If you discovered this when diving, it would seem like an alien was living down here, making its food, but 
It's in fact a man-made underwater farm. The world has many mysteries to be found, and all of these we talked about were just in Europe. Imagine what's to be found in the future. What was the most shocking thing for you? You can let us know in the comment section below. And don't forget to give us a big thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. You can also hit subscribe for more awesome Missing Files content. Thanks for watching and see you next time. <laughs>